Good morning, my viewers. Welcome to another edition of the family. And today we'll be looking at norms and values laws in the society. And those that we'll be discussing with me this morning is I'm Mrs. Siburi E Blessing. Thank you very much, man. And Mr. F. Yama. Thank you very much for coming in, in discussing this issue that have been eminence in the society. So first of all, the first question will go to Ms. Ewurie Blessed. So please, man, what is the meaning of norms? Well, norms are those core values, those things that we hold in high esteem, that are meant to make us better persons as individuals and by extension, our society at large. It ought to pass from one generation to another. Thank you very much. So the other question will go to Mr. Iherman Friday. So sir, now from our own the definition of the NOG, do you also have something contrary to that? No, with all uh, respect, I support what the first speaker have just said, that the NOGs are those things the society and the family have to attend to, to keep the family going on well. Okay, thank you very much. Now let's look at the society in general. Now the society today, we are talking about things we hold with high esteem that has make us a better person or even to function properly in the society. We can also say that these are the things that the society encourage or being expected from individual on how to function properly in the society. So my first question now, these things have been locked or gradually fading out out of our society. What do you think is responsible for this? Okay, that is a very good question. That when we say about the society, is the family, the individual family makes up a society. It's not just, a society does not just come up himself. Family of different names makes up a society. And those things that makes the loss or retrogression in those values and norms is as a result we parents, we are not caring well. We are not directing the children in the positive direction. For example, in my own home, a child wake up in the morning and tells me, good morning, daddy. My first question to him that you cannot greet me like that. We have our own way of greeting in the family. I'm from the royal family, we greet Lamogun. It will make the child to know that we have a standard that we follow. English is a borrowed tradition into this family. Please, my son, when you are greeting me next time or you are greeting your mother or any of your elder that comes in, you should use the normal way of greeting in the family way of life so that the norms and the value will remain there. The child will know that this family have their own setting. Thank you very much for that. Mrs. Uh, Blessed Ewuri. Now, we have heard from the first speaker talking about he made mention of one of those norms, which is a uh, greeting. Do we still have other norms that we can really also look at that is fading out in the society today? Precisely. First, I'd like to thank my daddy here for a very fine shot he gave to it. We cannot begin to talk of the society without families. Now, I grew up learning that we learn first from our home before we go to the larger society. I was born into a family raised by parents even before I even grew to the extent of knowing that I have to go to school. Therefore, it is in the home that a child is taught what is right and what is wrong, first and foremost. Now, in the home, every home has their culture and traditions that they hold in high esteem. Yeah, that is so. actually now transmitted to the larger society. For example, generally we all define culture as a way of life. He has talked about greeting. It is highly appalling that today we see our children, when they see their elder ones, we say, good morning, sir. It is wrong because it is not part of our culture. It is not our value. It is not our norm. Other cultures that are fading away are our dress code. Now, we see many of our children, they come out looking like mad people. If police, for example, were to arrest mad people on the street. I'm sure they will even leave the actual normal persons and arrest the normal ones because of the way they present themselves. 
there's this popular saying, dress the way you want to be addressed. You see all sorts of crazy dresses, all in the name of fashion, that our children are beginning to imitate and bringing into our homes. And we as parents pretend that we do not see all of these things. Sometimes even the parents go to the market to buy children these things, thereby exposing them to all of these ills. The get rich quick syndrome is another one. When we were growing up, we, we always believed that parents taught us that you have to work hard to earn your living. Hard work pays was always a slogan that was given to us. But today, I know of a young man that I'm mentoring today whose father personally took him to a, a Yahoo man that they call Azama in their local palace and said, I want my son to learn this trade. Wow. So, <laughs> I also know of a young man who got admission into Ekboma. I ran to the father and said, ah, daddy, I've got the admission. And the father said, hey, you want to go to school? That's nice. Don't you know what your mates are doing? If you want to go to school, go and do what your mates are doing so that you can go to school because I don't have the money to train you. Mm -hmm. So there are so many. These are one or two few examples. Yeah. Our society is becoming... Today, we, 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 we are complaining of this generation. But I hope that tomorrow will be... A, because somebody, a comedian once jokingly said... If God will not punish this generation, then God will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Because this generation is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. There are so many, many values. Our children no longer respect their elders. They do not even have the time to read their books. They want to press phones. And who are those responsible for all of this? The parents. Thank you. So if we can go on and on and on and on and talk about the society has just a little to contribute. Discipline is another norm that is fading away. I remember that when we were growing up, we were children of the entire community where we lived. If I commit an offense, you don't have to be my father to correct me. You don't have to be my mother to correct me. If my teachers for any reason beat me in school, I cannot even go home to tell my parents that my teachers flogged me. For doing something for wrong. For doing something wrong. But today, what do we have? If you correct another person's child, the person will come and ask you, now you born for me. He consigns you. So we are not living a kind of mind your business life. Mind your business. Yes. And it is not good. It is not healthy for our society. Thank you very much for that lengthy uh, explanation. I think there is a place I really want us to we'll take it on that day. That's Zama um, practice. We'll take it as a topic on this program. Thank you very much. Now, sir, uh, from uh, our own explanation now, we, we have discussed uh, those values that is fading out oh, yeah. in the society gradually. Now, you may mention of some, and she also may mention of some. Now, who is to blame for these things that are fading out in our society, oh, for these norms and values? Yeah, thank you very much, my moderator. That is a very good one. It's interesting. Like Madame have said nearly all, that the parents are the first people to point fingers so, because they say education starts from home. I sitting before you, I'm a teacher. A child should get the normal home education, telling them the norms and the value, doing the right thing. Like he mentioned one thing that touched my mind. My own daughter gained admission this year to Archie Polytechnic. When he was leaving last week, he not told me that I have to buy her some dress. That they don't allow people wearing short mini uh, skirt to enter the school compound. I told her, I said, you don't need much of it. Because it's the church you attend, so rescuer. Your bishop or your apostle, they do not allow such a kind of immoral dressing. I said, you have some good dress. He said, that is a but I still need more. He said, some are short. That if it's not up to the knees, they will not allow you in. Then I have to bring out some of my leftover natives take it to the tailor to sew it. In fact, when they sew it, they sew it in the form of mazi yeah. that we get across the nails. And if a parents continue to monitor their daughters in dressing well, it's a way of correcting the retrogression of the norms and value. 
But by the time we close our eye, that whatever our daughters or our son does is okay by me, if it's okay by me, the society will accept it. We are not helping an issue. We are destroying the life of the, the children. Madam, I've said it, that when they were growing up, when the child in the school, he does something wrong. The teacher will kill the child. When the child comes home, you could not even report to it. But if you notice it, that there are some bruises on the child, but you will not ask, what happened? By the time he explained to you, we tell you, your son, yes, the teacher was correcting you so that in future you will be a better figure. Correction. Yes, correction. Very, very important. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'd like to also say here yeah, that the government, the government of the day has not also helped issues. Sure. Okay, uh, what area do you feel the government have not really helped in this issue? Okay, it is true that most of these children, all of us, come from a home, a family unit. You will discover that the policies that our government have put in place is affecting almost every citizen of this country negatively. Most parents no longer can provide for their children or cater for their needs. And so, because they are not able to do all of these things, they close their eyes to some of these things that are going wrong, even when they know that these things are wrong. So I think our government should also take into cognizance the welfare and the feelings of the citizens they are governing. For example, today, the hike in prices of food. Sometimes I wonder, those that have eight children, how do they feed them? Because it is not easy. So, because most of these children are not able to be catered for by their parents, they take to so many social vices. So many. Our parents don't even care anymore, so long as their children are comfortable and they are not disturbing them. So, we also like to say that the government has not also helped in this regard. Thank you very much for that uh, explanation on uh, who is to blame. The from all our discussion now, the parents have the highest percentage yes. to be blamed. Just a little, let's say 10% for the government to blame in area of uh, policy making okay. and uh, formulations. Yeah. Now, sir, now we are gradually coming to the climax of this uh, discussion. Yeah. Now, what are the ways forward? Now, these things as is being locked, mm. we cannot continue like this as a society mm. or X we will not have a society any longer. Yeah. So what can we do to make sure these things are be restored back to our society? Yeah, thank you. Uh, one of those things that have to be done, I as a parent, if I control my immediate family, like my son or my daughter, tell him this way you are going is not good enough, the way you are dressing is a kind of immoral dressing, you are almost half naked, and the mother comes around to tell me, ah, that you live on and only she they do, do that thing. You know, they see her mate. We are not helping issue. But when the parents come together and agree on the compromise, that when I correct my daughter, say, hey, don't dress like this. We are half naked. The mother comes in to support me that, ah, well, my baby, what are you doing? See, I'm seeing your important part of your uh, body. I'm seeing your breasts. I'm seeing almost your underwear. Don't do it. We'll be correcting those children positively. But if there is a segregation in the family, when I say it must be like this, and my wife is telling me, leave them to dress like they are made outside, we are not helping the society. The correction or the retrogression that is happening, 80% is caused by the parents, the family. Because when you say a child should go to school, when he goes to school, you beg the, the teacher should teach them uh, academics and morals. The morals should start in our home by telling the child, to do the right thing, not telling the child to copy negative action you are seeing outside there. If a school like Auchi Polytechnic can tell a girl of about 18 years and above to say, you must dress well before you have a free visa to enter this compound, that when your needs are being exposed, they will not allow you entrance. So in that aspect, the government is doing their own part. That is an institution. They are government institution. They are correcting. But we further have 80% impact to implement at home. Because when you put that fear in your children at home, when they go outside, they will do a better thing, not going negatively. That's my own submission. Thank you very much. So, man, in general, in your submission. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Moderator. I would like to say that every family should go back to the drawing board. Drawing board. Today, we thank God that the white mass religion has taken over 
almost everything and our African traditional religion is gradually fading away. And I want to believe as much as I have known that every religion preaches values. So why then do we learn all of these things, whatever religion you practice, and then you go back and do the, the negative or the opposite? I want to say, like Daddy has said, the family should be more united for a heart that is divided against itself can never stand. It can't stand the test of time. The parents must be united and teach our children, go back to those core values that made us the ideal African society. Then, the government on its own should see what they can do to ensure that every citizen in this country is being catered for to a reasonable measure. And all of us that make up the society should drop this I don't care attitude, not be me born now. If you and I were brought up like that, I am sure that by now, we would not even have a world to live in. Let all of us go back. If I see somebody's child doing the wrong thing, let me correct with love. It is very, very important. I must not turn my back and say, this child is not my, my. child. We must begin to teach every child. Because for heaven's sake, this child that you are turning your back on might even end up being your potential in-law. Mm. Might even end up being either your mother or your savior tomorrow. So each of us, we must all join hands together to ensure that we have a better society. Mm. The churches, the mosque, whatever religion we preach, let us preach love continuously. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the bell notification icon, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and we promise to eat you with the latest of news, gist, and entertainment. Remember, it's Radio Ojo and online TV. Stay safe.